If you are a real estate agent and you are tired of cold calling, door knocking, paying for ads that flat out don't work, or just tired of not knowing how to generate leads, then this is the channel for you. We are four rockstar agents who have come together to help fellow agents achieve financial freedom as well as location and time freedom. My name is Andy Hollis along with my partners Aileen Fountain, David Doran, and Tim Hollanden. Together we have over 50 plus years experience and knowledge in the real estate and sales and training industry and we are hoping to pass that knowledge on to you. So let's get started. What's yes, up everybody? We are we're excited to have you. I'm glad Tim's here because Tim knows you as well as he does. I'm going to let him actually do a formal invite in just a second, but let me make sure everybody's here first. Uh, well, thank you, Eric. Uh, good morning, everybody. 11 o'clock Eastern. Um, gosh, I don't know where to start. I mean, I, I could talk for an hour about Aileen. Aileen is a dear, dear, dear friend of mine. Uh, we met back in 2013. She used to be the property manager for a condominium association in a condo that I own down in Gulf Shores, Alabama. Um, I sat on the board of that and uh, Aileen was running. She was basically the manager of that property. And uh, we were both REMAX agents at the time. Uh, we met every single time I went to Gulf Shores and always had dinner or lunch or a cocktail or two and just really just started pouring into each other, became dear friends. and. Aileen was the very first person I showed EXP to. And I think she told me I was effing crazy, if I can quote. <laughs> I did not but, say uh, effing. <laughs> I think she did, but anyway. That's, that's that what Stephanie would have said. <laughs> <laughs> that was Don't in December on me. of 2013. Um, I joined EXP in February 2014, or 20, excuse me. I said 2013, 2017. I joined 2017 and, and Aileen was a little slow, not because she didn't believe in it. That's what she says, but she had like 23 listings that she wanted to get closed first or something crazy like that. But anyway, dear friend of mine, great rock star, star agent, huge producer, as well as an attractor. She literally pulled in a million dollars in GCI last year. I'm just so proud that she's my friend and, and welcome lady. It's all yours, girl. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so Tim's right about the part where I, I, so, um, I'm just going to real quick kind of tell you guys how I was attracted and then I'm going to segue into how I attract others. Um, so EXP, when Tim brought it to me was super new. I had never heard of it when he called me. I was like, Tim, I have never heard of this company and I don't know what you're talking about. I have no idea why you would leave Remax. I think this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. And he said, well, he said, here's why I'm looking at it. And that's when he started talking about the stock and the revenue share. And I was like, okay. I was like, what's well, actually super interesting. So let's continue the conversations. And we continued to talk about it for about three months. So we continued the conversation, but the truth of the matter was, I was very happy where I was. I was getting 95% of my commissions. I was extremely busy selling real estate. I didn't even want to have to think about making a switch. It, it sounded stressful. It sounded, you know, but the more we talked about it, the more I was like, okay, wow, this could really impact my future. I was not thinking one year down the road when I was looking at EXP. I started thinking three, five, and 10 years down the road. And that's where that's where it all changed for me because I, I, I wasn't actually going to come. I, I was like, I, I'm doing too well. Remax is the brand in my market. Nobody's heard of EXP in my market. It would be, it, it's too risky of a move. So I, I wasn't going to do it, but I got my pen and paper and I got this thing out it's called a calculator. Most agents don't know what this is. Um, I know if you're like me, I can only multiply by three and 6% in my head. So I have to have this for anything else. And so I started crunching the numbers. And once I did that, I was like, okay, year one, probably going to change my, my net profit by about 50 K significant, like, right? Like the 50,000 is not anything to just, you know, bat your eye at. But I was like, is that enough to make me move brokerages? And so I made, I immediately made a one, three and five year goal while I was sitting down there crunching numbers. And once I projected out year five, I was like, holy crap, 
I was like, if I don't do this, this is going to be a major financial mistake because this could totally change my life over the rest of my real estate career. And I could potentially cut my retirement time in half because I already had a retirement plan. My retirement plan was to acquire rental properties, have them paid for. And I figured it was going to take me 10 to 15 years to have 10 rental properties paid for that would gross maybe 10K a month. That's not a fantastic retirement, but at least it was a plan. But most real estate agents don't have a plan. I didn't have a secondary income. It was just me um, get all the income from my family. So, um, so yeah, so once I looked at that and projected, oh my God, I can cut my, my, my uh, retirement plan in half. I can still buy rental properties. Now I've got a secondary and a third uh, thing with the stock and the revenue share that's going to bring extra money in that's really going to change the whole dynamic of everything. And so once I did that, I knew I was coming. And I was the first, I was the first big agent in my market to come over. So it was terrifying. And I had Remax agents calling me and like, I heard the funniest thing. Somebody told me you were moving to EXP Realty. And I said, no, I'm calling Aileen right now. That can't be true. And I was like, uh, it is true. And they're like, what? So it was a big deal when I left. And um, of course, since then, a ton of big, big names have moved over as everybody knows how the story played out over the last five years. That's how Tim attracted me. And to be honest with you, what I'm gonna talk about is not really similar to that because I don't know that everyone, majority of the agents that you call, you're not gonna have this, this relationship that Tim and I had where I really trusted him. And honestly, if anyone else had been calling me about it, I never would have even really taken a real look at it because I knew Tim had done a lot of due diligence on it. I knew that he was a numbers guy like me. I knew he was even more thorough than I am. So I really trusted so much of the work that he had done leading up to me coming over. And when he called me and told me that he was taking his team to EXP Realty, I thought, number one, you're crazy. And number two, holy crap, like this is for real. He's really doing this. There's got to be more to it. And that's that kind of changed everything. So one of the things that I kind of want to convey on this call is we've all heard, if you've been to any of the conferences, if you've been to any of the big stuff, if you're in on any Zoom calls, you have these speakers that all get up there and talk about like, quote, how easy it is. And they make it out to sound so easy and anyone can do it and all this stuff. And so it's kind of, to me, a little bit false because it's not easy. I think agent attraction is challenging, just like I think selling real estate is challenging. You didn't learn how to talk to buyers and sellers with confidence your first outing. It took time. And, um, you know, same thing with agent attraction. You're not going to be great at it at first. You've got to start doing it to get better at it and to build up the confidence. So this, I don't know, myth, if you will, from a lot of the super successful people at eXp Realty, that attraction is easy and they're trying to get you to do it, I think is a little misleading. So I'm not going to do that in this call. I'm going to talk to you about like really what I think it takes to agent attract. So I'm still selling real estate. I'm sure the majority of you guys are still selling real estate and that's the challenge, right? Like we're not full-time agent attractors because we all still need to go out and do our bread and butter, which is to sell real estate. So to fit it in with what you're doing, that's the challenging part. But just like building your real estate business, what did that take? It took time, it took consistency, it took effort. Agent attraction is no different than building your real estate business. And so everybody's in there at a different place in their journey with their real estate business. And so you'll all be at a different place in your journey with uh, agent attraction. But uh, so, you know, it certainly does help if you've got an established business because you've already got some credibility within your market. But if that's the case, then feel, don't don't hesitate to go outside of your market to agent attract. I mean, when when I, I've called on agents outside of my market that had no clue who I was, but they know Gulf Shores, they know my area, and they were willing to talk and they were willing to listen. And as a result, I brought over some really great agents in other markets. But um, so how I really do it is I, I figured out I had a time block with it. 
So I don't agent or trap on Monday or Fridays unless it's a very specific deal where an agent had to have that day for a Zoom call. That's fine on a secondary Zoom call to do that. But on the initial phone calls when I'm attracting, I time block Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Number one, I think you have a better success rate of getting an, an agent to talk to you on those days. And number two, it's just it just works out Mondays. I'm doing paperwork. I'm doing real estate sell stuff Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'm fitting attraction in with my real estate. And then Friday, everybody knows Friday and real estate can be a, a, a full moon. So you have, you have a lot of closings. A lot of stuff ends up coming up on Friday. So I don't try to book anything specific on Friday. So start with agents that you know. That's the obvious one, right? Um, and then... From there, you know, uh, agents that you've done cross sales with would be the next agent that I would would talk to. Um, and then from there, like, so say you're, you know, you're brand new at this and you don't want to call someone that you know really well and screw it up to begin with. You want to build some confidence. Go through your MLS and see who the, you know, see who the newer agents are, the non-producing or the under-producing agents are and start there. Practice with them because if you screw that up, then, you know, no big deal. Um, because as I mentioned, it takes time to get to get your script down, to get, you know, comfortable with it, to, you know, to not fumble with it. So make those mistakes, you know, with agents that either A, don't know you, B, aren't in your market, C, you know, you're not going to feel dumb if they say no. Who, who cares, right? That you sold two things in the last three years. I don't care if you tell me no. So um, I'm just being real with you guys. So that, that's a way to kind of just start to build up your confidence. Early on, the mistake that I was making um, that I want to tell you all about so you don't make it is I would get the flow going. I would get the conversation going. And then they'd start asking me a lot of questions and I would answer them all. And the next thing I knew I was on the phone with them for 45 minutes or an hour, had answered all their questions. So there was no need for them to, to want to schedule a Zoom with me. And so it really kind of died at that point. You know, I couldn't really, couldn't really segue into the next step with them because they felt like they knew everything now about eXp Realty, which we all know you cannot explain eXp Realty on one phone call. It's not possible. So... That was a mistake. Um, what I've done with my script is <clears throat> I always start out, even if it's somebody you're doing a cross sale with and, and you sense in the conversation that they're not super busy, they're not trying to hop on to the next call, that they've got a few minutes. And I would even say, hey, do you got a few minutes? Yeah, what's going on? I just wanted to see um, what you were seeing in the market. Everybody knows the market's shifting, it's changing. Our market is a total mixed bag right now. So it's a really easy conversation to have. Like, how's your business doing? What are you seeing in the market? And then they're going to, you know, that's going to spark an organic conversation about real estate. And then from there, I go, um, you know, like whatever brokerage they're with. So a lot of times I'll know what their brokerage is like, but I'll, I'll start asking questions like, do you go into the office? I always like to know if they go into the office because if they're like, oh yeah, I go to the office every day, I have to have the office. I know that's going to be a tough sell for eXp Realty. If they're like, oh no, I hardly ever go to the office, which is what most agents are going to say, then I know I've gotten past one of the hurdles that I'm going to have to get past later on uh, when talking about eXp Realty. But then I also kind of say like, if, if I'm on the phone with a Remax agent, I already know how Remax is. So I'll go, oh, um, I know my desk fee was fifteen hundred at Remax Gulf Shores. What's your desk fee? And then I'll kind of start asking them about their brokerage. And and if I don't know anything about their brokerage, I'll ask them very specific questions so that I can kind of understand before moving into EXP Realty how we're gonna kind of shape up with them. Unfortunately, there's a lot of flat fee brokerages out there. I don't know how they make any money, but that's always a tough sell. Um, but so I'll start trying to get a little bit more information about their fees, their fee structure. If I don't know it already, if I do know it already, I go, oh, I know you're with Bellator or I know you're with Keller Williams. You've got a $3,000 franchise fee and then you got a um, $22,000 or $18,000 cap. So $21,000, blah, 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 blah. And I start talking like that. And then so we're corresponding back and forth with that. From there, it's very important because here's where I go to my segue. 
after I say all that, I go, hey, I'm like, um, do you know anything about EXP Realty or what, what do you know about EXP Realty? So I ask them that question because I want to hear what they're going to say. Majority of them have no clue about EXP Realty. So they'll either say, oh, I really don't know much about it at all, or they'll tell you the little bits and pieces that they do know of it. But super helpful information because if they don't know anything at all, that's great because you're about to blow their mind. If they know a little bit about it, it's usually pretty random. Like, uh, I know they don't have any offices. I know they're virtual. I know they don't have a broker, blah, blah, blah. And I go, well, that's kind of true, but not really. And so then I'll be able to, from there, talk about like, if, if what they said was right, I'll go, yeah, that's right. Or if they said what's wrong. So that kind of continues the conversation. But from there, um, this is really important. Um, so from there, that's kind of where I get into my script. And I'll go, well, you know, here's the difference about EXP Realty. One of the biggest differences between us and every big name brokerage out there, all the big names, Remax, Cole Banker, Century 21, and I'll start naming them. Every single one of them is a franchise. EXP Realty is not a franchise. We are one company completely nationwide. We are the fastest growing company in the history of real estate. We, have, we are growing into 24 countries and expanding internationally every quarter. Um, so I'll, I'll, give, I'll throw that little nugget out there and then I'll go, the only difference between what I do and what you do is that we both sell real estate. We both, that's our bread and butter, right? Like we're, we're both getting earning commissions. But the, the only difference between what I do and what you do is that I get paid three ways and you get paid one. And I go, now year one, that may not change your world, but year three, five, 10 years down the road, it's a massive change to what I'm gonna make versus what you make. And the only thing that we're doing differently is that I'm at EXP Realty and you're not. So that gets there, that, 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 that really gets them listening to you. And then I'll say, um, so we are publicly traded. We are on the NASDAQ. Our stock symbol is EXPI. There's five different ways that I earn stock in my company. And our company shares its revenue with us. Every month, they take 50% of all the revenue that they bring in, and they pay out their agents who help grow the brokerage through de direct deposit. That's every month. So that's how I'm getting paid three different ways. And, it, you know, and then I go, it's way too much for me to try and explain to you on the phone right now. And a lot of it is visual. So I'd love to hop on a Zoom with you and actually show you what I'm talking about. And nine times out of 10, they say yes to that. So it's a very high, it's a very high ratio that I get them to agree to a Zoom call. Now we all know it's very challenging at that point. You set the Zoom call, sometimes they make it, sometimes they reschedule. You know, that's the challenging part is scheduling that Zoom call. Always do it on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in between like nine and, and two in the afternoon. So that way I know that, that way I can organize my week. It gives them plenty of options to hop on a Zoom, it gives me plenty of options to reschedule. And if it's a Thursday or a Wednesday Zoom and they're like, Aileen, I could really do Friday at nine. That'd be a great time for me. Then I'll make that happen. But for the most part, it helps me time block everything and the other key thing is you really want to get them on that zoom as close to that phone call as possible so if you made that phone call on a tuesday see if they've got time on that wednesday or that thursday for a zoom call if not you want it to be that next week once you start pushing it out a lot of times you know you get them like oh i'm gonna be on vacation next week and i'm like oh crap like we're never going to get on a Zoom now because you're going to come back from vacation. You're going to be behind. Then another two weeks are going to go by and then it's really challenging. But uh, ideally, you want to get them on that Zoom as quickly as possible. Um, but yeah, that's that's how I do it. And I always tell them, I said, you know, let's hop on a Zoom. I'd love to show you the platform. I'm, t I'm speaking and the words are coming out, but I know you're not hearing. It. So uh, first of all, great job. Thank you. I'm going to ask this question. I clarified a couple of things. I love the idea of what you stated when you wrote, um, you were thinking about making 
the switch, but just the thought of making the switch was stressful. I remember you saying that at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So I want to remind everybody that people have to go through that process. Mm -hmm. People are always going to go through that process. How did you overcome that process when you decided, I'm going to really look at what that transition looks like? Well, I, I came to a place where I was like, okay, I could, I could do this switch at the first of the year and it might be a little cleaner and it might make a little more sense in my head. But if I was going to do it, I, I just needed to rip the bandaid off and do it. And I'm, I was so glad that I did. I wanted to go ahead, even though it was not a convenient time, but in my mind, I wanted to go ahead and get moved over so that I could start learning EXP and get entrenched in EXP. Cause I knew the quicker I did that, the more ahead I was going to be of, you know, the, the next people coming through to EXP. Um, so I just figured like there was never going to be a good time. So I honestly, I did it at the worst time possible. It was like July. Um, it was middle of the year, had 11 pending sales. I had, I don't know how many listings I had. It was not convenient at all, but, um, but I just did it. But one of the reasons, one of the things that happened is if, if you do it in July, then come January, you're in a lot better position than if you don't do it in July, because you're looking at leaving, leaving, leaving for six months, and then you've got to go through the transition anyway. So, yeah, like it, but, like I told Tim, I was like, you should have told me about this sooner. I could have had these 13 pending sales close at eXp Realty. I'd, I already have a fifth icon now. <laughs> If it means anything, we did ask him to call you sooner, but he didn't do it. He was too afraid. Well, let's um, just, so let's blame the, him. The second thing you referenced, and I love this, I'm, I'm stealing it, I'm letting you know, I'll give you credit the first three times, <laughs> is talking to buyers and sellers with confidence did not happen your first outing. And talking with people about Asian attraction is not going to, gonna, gonna happen. You, you talked about building confidence how long did it take you to build that confidence? Um, what's ebbed and flowed because I've changed my approach um, over time. So that part has ebbed and flowed. But I mean, in the beginning, it was, you know, you were a little bit more skittish because, you know, first of all, it was five years ago. No one really knew of EXP Realty. The whole concept was foreign. Of course, it's still people have no idea what EXP Realty is all about. But I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to come off salesy. I didn't want to come off. You, you certainly want to be authentic with it and genuine. And that's why it really takes time to figure out your own script, script and your own method. And if there's some of my script that you can take and feel comfortable and, and make it genuine and make it, you know, very organic within the approach you want to do, then, then that's what, that's the whole purpose of what I, why I wanted to share it with you because everybody is going to have a slightly different approach. But as long as you're coming at it from a genuine standpoint, that will come off. I mean, if you're coming off as, as you know, you're just trying to get another number, you're trying to get, you know, same thing with real estate sales. Your client will feel if they're just a transaction to you. And that's not how you grow a business. It's how you get one transaction done. So, um, you know, and we all know relationships matter. I mean, you know, some agents that knew me really well that took the meeting or took the call just because they knew me, but really had no interest in EXP Realty. Some of them gained interest in EXP Realty and came over as a result. Some of them I still keep in touch with and they may never come, but we still have a relationship. So I think to answer your, really answer your question, in the beginning, you're scared because you don't want to mess that relationship up. So you don't want to come off as like, Oh, I'm trying to recruit you over to EXP Realty because I'm going to make a whole $2,800 a year off of you. I mean, that's that's what you don't want to come off of. As so, what you really want to come off as is, look, this is going to change. This is I'm going to retire with EXP Realty. EXP Realty has changed my life because I'm now earning stock and revenue share in this company. And you know, you want that them to have the same opportunity that you have because. We're all out there selling real estate. We're just getting paid a different way. I'm not. I'm not asking you to sell soap or paper products in addition to real estate. I'm just asking you to do exactly what you're doing at ABC Realty, but do it over at, on EXP's platform and get all the advantages that I'm getting. One of the ways I've heard um, it said is this: 
when I made the decision to come to EXP, I realized something. I realized I was going to do the same thing I was doing where I was. I was going to do it with more updated tools, a lot more training, some systems I wasn't even aware existed. And in addition to that, I had the ability to retire soon because of an equity program and the ability to attract agents down the line. So, go ahead. I mean, yeah, no, I think it's super important because the majority of agents that you talk to want nothing to do with agent attraction and that's okay. And and you need to you need to say that like look, hey, 93% of the agents at EXP Realty are 10 or 90% of the agents at EXP Realty do no attraction whatsoever. There's really only a small percentage that are doing it at any kind of volume or high high degree. So, you know, it's okay if you don't want to attract agents. You know, focus, then then you want to focus on the stock and all the other tools that EXP Realty has and all the other ways that we're, our business is going to help. You want to give, you want to, you know, convey the value of the Freedom Team. I mean, and that's a huge thing. Like, we have all this value that we can bring to to another agent that you don't have anything to do with because the Freedom Team's doing it all. I mean, that's a huge advantage. So you want to talk, these are things that you're going to talk about when you get on the Zoom with them. You're not going to talk about it with them in the first call unless you want to just drop a little nugget. Like, yeah, I also want to explain the Freedom Team with you when we get on the Zoom. And, and that's a whole nother call, right? Like how to do the Zoom, that's a whole nother call, but or a whole nother uh, Zoom class rather. But, the, you know, I want to focus on how do you get them to that Zoom and right now, if you're uncomfortable with doing the Zoom, we all know six different people on the Freedom Team right now that will help you with that Zoom that are probably great at it. Um, so, yeah, I think it's super important to minimize that if that's a, any kind of a stressor, like, oh, my God, I don't want to recruit agents. Oh, you don't have to. But you're on the phone with agents every single day. What if one of them is asking you about EXP Realty or one of them has heard about EXP Realty and they decide they want to come and they want to talk to you about it? Don't you at least want that opportunity? So, um, yeah, I mean, the, the fact of the matter is most agents don't want to attract, which is, you know, is a good thing. Well, again, part of the, the way you deliver the information often is the way they receive it. So if you say to them, look, I came because it made sense for me to come with what EXP can help me to do today with the transactions I'm doing and the stock accumulation was something I wasn't going to get before. And down the road, as I came across agents that I thought would be interested, if I brought them here, I could get compensated as well, rather than talking about that as a major. I look like we have a couple of questions. We'll start with Kelly and Mark. Go ahead. How do you follow up with your people? <laughs> so follow up is the is the most challenging part of it. It is, and I, I I say it's the most challenging part of real estate too. Is that is the follow up, follow up with buyers and sellers is the same with follow up with agents. I mean, it is so challenging. I have the CRM Grow platform that helps. And um, my follow-up is usually based upon how the Zoom call went. And, and I'm, I really stress in my, my, my intro call and, and my Zoom that I'm, you know, no pressure. I will never try to pressure them to change. If, if they want to continue conversations, then, you know, then I will. And if not, then, then no problem whatsoever, you know. And, and so I leave it as a very no pressure um, my follow-up needs to improve, and um, that's something that I'm working on. But CRM Grow helps with that. A lot of times, um, you know, I'll play the nine-minute video for them on my Zoom. I start my Zoom out with that nine-minute video because then that segues into the other things that I wanted to, uh, to accomplish on the Zoom. And there's nothing that can get everything that's in that video in a better, quicker time frame with the visuals in that nine minute video. So I always start there. So my follow up, I add them to my CRM grow and then I'll follow up with, hey, um, here is a nine minute, here's the nine minute video we watched. 
And then I'll include, uh, Tim actually has a 25 minute presentation that I think is really good and, it, and he presents it a little different than I do. So I'll include that presentation in there as well. And then of course you can see if they've watched it or not and, um, and, and follow up from there, so. I put that information in the chat bar as far as if people want to ask about that, they can. Uh, but you do use the nine minute video that's in the CRM group, right? Absolutely. Like, use that. Okay. Yep. There are agents that do and there are agents that don't. I want to remind everybody that if you're looking for a presentation to show, we've got five of them or six of them listed, including a commercial one, I believe, at freedomteamsupport.com. Just go across the top of the menu, you'll see um, uh, presentations and you can pick any of those to use. Some people will ask, what, what do I use for different prospects? The answer is they all work. You choose what you want to choose. I'd recommend you choosing one or two presentations and sticking to that rather than trying to match presentations to personalities every time. Because once you get reliably confident with a presentation, believe it or not, that presentation will work for you best. Deborah, it looks like you have a question as well. I do. Um, so I've been, a lot of Keller Williams people have tried to recruit me. So what is the, I mean, I know you said in your presentation, I mean, it was, Wonderful, thank you, I appreciate that. Um, what is the big difference other than it's, we're not a franchise, we're owners. From we're Keller Williams? Yeah. Oh, huge. I mean, ask Keller Williams how much of the brokerage they own. Yeah, I mean, that's why I'm asking. I mean, it's yeah. like those are the people that I have the biggest trouble with right now. Well, Keller Williams to me, like I also, you know, I didn't really get into this, but I will target a certain brokerage heavier than another, just understanding their structure. And Keller Williams is absolutely one that I would star at one of the top of my list as, as ones to target. So they are all slightly different. And I know Stephanie came from Keller Williams, so she may be able to speak if I say something incorrectly. But down here, they have a, a $21,000 cap. 3,000 of that is the franchise fee that comes off the top till they cap that out. And then they have another $18,000 cap with the company. After that, um, there are, I don't remember all their miscellaneous fees, but they have quite a bit of miscellaneous okay. fees. Yeah, an exorbitant amount of what they either call their desk fee or their technology fee, which way out blows our 85 bucks a month. And you get absolutely zero for it. Here's the thing. The, as a market center owner, and this is only going to stay private, right? Because this is our attraction call. Right. But let me tell you, the very first thing that I learned as a market center owner was how to cook the books. Because they do profit share, not revenue share. So our revenue at EXP comes in, and it's all public, right? Because we're a publicly traded company. We see all of the revenue that's coming in, and half of that revenue gets shared back out. At KW, it's called a profit share. And one of the first things you learn in the accounting is to make sure that you don't have profit to share in. And so when I go after or speak to a KW agent, the very first thing I ask them is, tell me this, how much in profit share did you get in all of last year? Tell me. And then I, sh and then I tell them what I got in revenue share. And, it, it, and I'm telling you, it is so far drastically different, guys, it, it, it's just unheard of. So there's a lot of difference with KW and what EXP is. They are taught to believe that it's not very different, which is why we have to do our part in educating them the, the correct way. Part of why I was telling you guys when I, after I get done with asking them about um, their, you know, how's business and you do all the chit chat about the market and then I go straight into you know, if they're a Keller Williams agent and, and are, and I'm genuinely trying, I'm genuinely trying to understand how their brokerage model works so that I can flip the script on them and talk to them about eXp Realty. So when you go to this lunch, genuinely ask questions about how Keller Williams brokerage model works. Get all the nitty gritty from her. And then that, and then you can flip it and go, well, I don't know why I would leave EXP Realty. I'm earning stock in this company. And then start going into the reasons why you think EXP Realty wouldn't, why you would not, I mean, I'm going to retire with EXP Realty. I don't believe another brokerage is going to come out in my lifetime that's going to be better than what EXP Realty is offering us. 
And, um, and so talk about like, hey, I'm at EXP Realty because we have a retirement plan. We have revenue share versus profit sharing and understanding the difference between that. And you're talking about a huge difference. EXP is paying its agents off the revenue, off the top. There is, it's all black and white. It's not like, oh, I'm, I have no idea what your profit share is going to be next month. It's black and white at eXp Realty. And you can go into your dashboard and see exactly what you're going to get. There's no guessing game to it. So, you know, I would get super prepared on everything that is eXp Realty. And then I would go to that lunch with a genuine curiosity about Keller Williams as if you are genuinely interested because you want to hear about their their model and then you need to flip it and say well i don't i don't see where keller williams is going to benefit me for, based on what exp does for me for x reasons x y and z so and and, and i would also be trying to find out in that lunch like if she's a recruiter obviously she's doing it for profit sharing I would flip it and I'd be like, you could do the exact same thing you're doing now at EXP Realty and make 10 times as much. Yeah, and she's a, she's actually a, a, an amazing agent. Like, she would be excellent to bring on. Well, then, if she's also selling real estate, then I would take a look at her numbers in the MLS because if she's an icon agent, then it's a slam dunk. I mean, there's... <laughs> I mean, between Keller Williams and EXP. I mean, it's already better even if you aren't. But if you're an icon agent, I mean, how do you, you can't even compare. It's, it's that significant. So, icon so agents. One thing I would add to that, um, Ellie, is when you're going with genuine curiosity to find out about Keller Williams, ask her, so tell me exactly how your profit share works. Like, how does it, how can an agent plan for their retirement using the profit share? Because they, there's no answer to that. With K, with, with PXT, you know, there does the presentation on how to get to 132,000, right? You've all seen that. There is no, there is no black and white, here's the path to 132,000 with KW, because they don't know what the profit's going to be every month. They, the agents don't have any say on how the money's spent. If they decide to come in and renovate the whole office, then there goes profit for the next year, probably, right? And to, and to a Stephanie's point, you know, if, if they're cooking books on the back end, on and on and on. But there's no step one, step two, step three to get yourself to X dollars with profit share. On the flip side, if you've got an agent who's like, I'm happy where I'm at, I always counter that. I go, you know what? I was really happy where I was at too. I had zero interest at looking at EXP Realty. I had never even heard of the company when my friend called me about it. I said, but you know what? After I looked at it and I got a calculator out and I put pen to paper, I knew I had to go to EXP Realty for my future. And if you would be, if you're open minded enough to take a look at it, I'd love to show you what I'm talking about. And that's another, that is a part of my script that I'll use if I'm talking to somebody who's like, I'm super happy where I'm at. And I literally just pulled over a Icon Remax agent who only took the call from me because he knew me and he had no intentions of leaving Remax. And once he, he said yes to the Zoom and once he saw it, he came over like three, three to four weeks later. Amy, awesome job today. I can tell you, you stimulated a conversation like we haven't had before. So awesome. Thank you so much for coming in and coming in two times. So we appreciate that. Hey, Lane, again, great job. Thanks so much for being Tim's friend. He does appreciate that. And with that said, <laughs> make it a great week, everybody. Don't forget to listen to the Freedom Team tip of the day. It comes into your email every day. And it's a minute to three minutes to start your day well. I promise. It does it for me, it'll do it for you. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you.